into the recorder. Welcome to Open Minds, Open Mic, the place to be on a Friday night. We have a special delight for you. All these open mics and Shaki G just joined. Sweet. Welcome, Shaki G. Oh, and another one, Nemo too. All right. All right, so I think I'll start us off uh, with a poem that I wrote yesterday at Fincabulary's workshop that I did, inspired by Catalyst. It's a Cyclops poem. I think you guys are familiar with the form. If not, it uses only words with one eye and one eye only, because Cyclopses have one eye and they only like words with one eye and one eye only. And so every word in this poem has one eye and one eye only. I begin in sin, shift swiftly into brightness, politeness, herein, strictly weird riddles trickle in, tickle skin, until I spin, grin wildly, kindly in whim, swim till I mildly disappear into unsightly biomass, insect architect, unlikely intellectual dialect, Minus this priceless, timeless, lifeless mind, it's witty hints, gritty city prints, convince him I'm in, circumvented righteousness, viruses in alliance with science. This time lies, interconnected with insurmountable lives. Survive this dive, drive twisted, I'm high, strive till I die, tie disconnected, gifted, disrespected kids in wires, griffin riders, spider coffin inspector, flies addicted, listed in higher choirs, higher liars, still drifted into brighter fires, tire spin, thin skin begin, pin pushing, pooling, drooling, Writer in tighter damnation, translation, salvation. Hope y'all enjoyed that piece. Woo yeah. Woo like yes. wow. I loved it. That was I've good. gotten to hear a few Cyclops poems, and it's incredible how diverse they they are. Even with I that, know, dude, that workshop we did, like it was so like everyone had twenty minutes, and I was like, you guys added to my lexicon like all of these wonderful Cyclops words, like, and and it's 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 a fun game. It's fun. Very good, Thomas. I loved it. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to start this off round one. Um, Amadeus, uh, who I believe is our first time here. So if y'all could just unmute yourselves and give a big open mind, open heart, open arms welcome to Amadeus. Thank you. Welcome, welcome Amadeus. Yeah. Amadeus, welcome. Thank you. To you. Welcome, so thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Or in the Philippines, we say magandang umaga, hapon at gabi. And we also say buenos dias desde Filipinas. So the poem that I'll be reciting for everyone here today, I wrote this when I graduated college. And it was a tribute to those who assisted us at the time. And it's entitled The Inevitable Questions. The inevitable questions. I came academically strong. Will I end in the same fashion when I graduate? Once, as a freshman, I was full of ideals and dreams. Once it's planned out, it will always be excellent. Yet such a thought is no different from a normal daydream. The reality of life is and will continue to be far from perfect and I was about to embark on a world of cruelty and neglect. Was I able to correct myself from the mistakes I made in the past? 
and the flaws of those who came before me. Sophomore year came, and college fantasy started to show its cracks. Reality started to hit me from different corners like a wolf pack. Others went into denial, but I refused to follow their ways. This year, I learned to manage my time and days. You see, sophomore was just another level of reality check. Did I set a proper example to the younger generation? Or was I too blind to realize that I have become egotistical with my ways? Now, being a third year level, it had its ups and downs. And gradually, I was becoming callous to reality's wrath. Night classes became rampant. One hits this grade level. I was always hoping my professor's behavior was not of the devil. However, this year's level taught me something exquisite, that it was okay to be a little bit narcissistic with one's forte and wit. However, with caution, my college journey wasn't over yet. Therefore, it was with vigilance that I said during this year's level, I may know many things, but I don't know everything. Therefore, practice humility. I am now at the end of my college road. What kind of legacy did I leave for the next generation? All these questions came flooding in now that I'm at the end of my college career. Inspiration took over to rectify certain issues so that history would not repeat itself. As seniors, we understand that our legacy says a lot about us. And in it, just a matter of time before this will have deep roots like an old tree. As I end this, one more significant question or question for the younger for the younger generation and the elders. Did we make you proud? The inevitable questions. Thank you. Yo, Amadeus, that was deep. That was that was moving. I really appreciate that. Welcome to Open Minds. We hope you can make it uh, every Friday if you can, man. I, I want to hear more. Yeah, Amadeus, come on back. One of us. One of us. One of us. Thank you. Give it up for Amadeus. Yeah. Well, Woo -hoo! Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. So, so come or you have another piece for us? We got time. Uh, if it if it's okay. Yeah, it's, uh, we want to hear. That's more. my last piece. Yeah, yeah. So this poem was uh was actually dedicated to me and Lacan back in the day, because there's this one poet. Uh, he told me the phrase scarlets and emeralds, like there's poets that are so good in spoken poetry, and there are others that their gift lies in. Uh, writing so I made a poem I made a poem ab about it actually and I hope you guys enjoy it's entitled Scarlets and Emeralds you see the lineage of poetry never gave birth to one but several see this and learn indeed it is true because it gave birth to several yet two only became distinct both coexist in this world, but never identical, because for one is born analytical and the other emotional. Scarlets, musicals, people that are driven by their emotions, blood red, the color that signifies rage and passion. Art forms come to life the moment they began to speak, for their presence are strong and never weak, thus earning the name spoken word. However, emeralds contradict that form of beauty, for their words are written that flows with power and clarity. Its quality exists in an intellectual manner. Meticulous and articulation are its banners. Therefore, it earned the name writer. There are art forms that flow subliminally, for their presence are silent but deadly. Both were never identical, yet similar. 
for they convey messages to a group or an individual. Both have their own unique ways. But in the end, both deserved an audience praise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, welcome again. That was that was dope. Um Daniel Fernandez and myself kind of did a similar poem and it was a tribute to Megas where we compared, you know, writing down things or or the ability to just freestyle. Right? So uh he wrote down some verses and then I just I list you know, read those verses and then we just freestyle afterwards and then we recorded it. And like it is, it's a different art form from spoken and written and being so meticulous with words chosen. Um I really appreciated that one. That was that was dope, man. Welcome to the fan. Thank you very much. Unmute yourselves and give it up for Amadeus. Amadeus. Yeah, Amadeus. Welcome. Very good. All right. So coming up next, out of Louisiana, we have the wonderful Nona Lee. You can unmute. There you go. Okay, so I got, I'm going to read three poems from this collection um, posted, and the chat is a review of it. It has links to the book and things like that. Stained Glass by A.A. A. Hybert. You point with broken fingers and fire in your mouths, preaching the words with songs of wicked vocalists, lawless, disobedient, ungodly. You say that God abandoned me the day I knelt at the altar of an auburn girl's hair that swept her shoulders and swayed with prayer that danced on her lips. The day I told her, you are heaven, she whispered, you are heaven, but I'm too afraid to die. And that's when I realized We've become too afraid to live. You say that I'm that damned woman, the scorned serpent, the leper the Lord forgot, and every unanswered prayer in the musicless cathedral, an amen left unspoken, hell-bound and bruised on the path I've chosen. You should know that with the time I've made art, out of the light you tried to pull from my eyes, you should know that stained glass windows are a mosaic of sinners pinned the holy place with their pride. The next one is body language. My body is a language no one seems to know. The freckles on my skin right now in Morse code. Beep, boom. Beep, beep, beep. The veins in my eyes spelling leave me alone. And the wrinkles in my face aren't a phone book. Listing my number to be sucked out of my mouth. My body's a language no one seems to know. A tongue that salivates and swallows stop signs. Twists and rings the words that trickle from my mind. My skin tells a story and I'm an open book for hands to study. Licked fingers flipping through my pages from beginning to end. My body's a language saying, never touch me again. And the last one is called Aurora. Yeah, your reading of them is awesome. You're like writing I want, I want and switching for starlight because they've dimmed within your glow. Your undried ink glittered sky are all the same. You radiate. And when you feel your writing doesn't save you, just know it saves the rest of us. you Stacks upon stacks of your words you've exhaled and exhaustion smells just like new books newborn in my hands and please know I'll raise them right. I've been skipping stones in the Milky Way because sure as the Greeks told their stories in the stars you were the thunk that mimicked my heart like any good writer does like any good human does so i hope i could stream myself along to create a constellation and when we become ancestors the future will draw an index finger along us and youthful awe and when you and i are timeless glistening borealis winds and tracing the sky with written promises that aurora will soon rise Yeah, wow, what a wonderful reading yeah, yeah, yeah. of that. 
Uh, number nine. <laughs> Everybody, I mean, give all the love you got for no one other. Hey, great. that was great. Wow. That was awesome. Yeah. Love it. I like her work too. That's Morse code, though. <laughs> Look, I didn't know Ray, if I was she... supposed to read it out loud, but I like You were, you, yo, on a know, I know. <laughs> You had it, dude, and that, that nailed it. That's, I was like, that's why I'm like, oh, you know what? Whoever wrote this to all. No, go away. Just, uh, they'd be so proud. Put this off for a bit. Are, are you from Louisiana? Where? What town? She's gonna type it. All right, coming up next, we've got Generalissimo. If you'd like to bless us with some words, brother, I'd appreciate it. Now, let me read my piece from Thomas's vocabulary workshop, my uh, Cyclops. Let me find it. I just had it up here. Here we go. Moonlight finds minds, longing signs. Screaming like crying tigers, fighting, biting lightning, digesting electric metrics, intense nonsensical musical emanations, emanating synesthetic, phonetic, poetic, rhyming stripes, lines, swerving, curving, crossing via atmospheric, pyrrhic transportation latitudes, mapping signals without sensible attitudes, paraphrasing the attitudes like genetic, apoplectic antithetical heretical heretical ex saints and i will do two more pieces real quick the first was from diane ward's workshop um i don't have a title for it yet uh, i think i'll just call it one afternoon on the bus there is a young man around 21 sitting directly behind the bus driver, intently tap dancing on his cell phone with his thumbs. Directly behind him is a man in his late 60s wearing a green, what looks like a green 1980s members-only windbreaker, who spends almost every afternoon riding the bus. He worries the kid who looks smart enough will ruin his ability to properly communicate because of all his constant texting Two women who are possibly not yet 20 are talking about the boys they have both dated, including facts like penis size. Suddenly, a bike messenger jumps the curve in front of the bus. The driver stops short. The phone flies to the side and hits one of the loud girls in her boob. She yells, boy, I own this phone now. In less than 18 months, the older man will write a New York Times bestseller titled What Happened During My Residency on the Columbus Avenue Line. And this piece was something that I very recently wrote. It's called Scotch on the Rocks. The bartender dips a metal scoop into the ice machine. The ice sounds like little marbles when it lands in the glass. He sets it atop the pockmarked bar. When he pours the scotch, you hear the slight rice crispiest crackle of the ice objecting to its eventual melting. It's the good expensive stuff that you rarely get. The bartender asks if you're celebrating something. He mentions that he remembers when your dad brought you in to celebrate your first job after college, back when his now deceased uncle owned the place. He pushes the glass across the oak, it travels less than a foot before it arrives at you. You lift it to about where your chin is. You tilt it back and forth. The ice jingles. It sounds a bit like one of those collars people put on their dog when they dress it up like an elf at Christmas. You lift it till it hits your bottom lip. It smells of fresh cooked butterscotch, brown, buttery, sweet, and the tiniest bit bitter. Your top lip rises just enough for a sip of liquor to travel over your tongue to your taste buds and slide down your throat. A warm sensation happens for a few seconds that feels like you won an award for sighing. 
during this time you closed your eyes when the scotch entered and opened them when you set the glass onto the bar. You exhale through your nose before sip number two. You say to the bartender, yes, Travis, I am celebrating. But you don't tell him what you are celebrating. You don't order a second drink. You leave a generous tip. He says, have a nice night and says your name. As you walk out, you wonder what you two would talk about if you ran into each other at a diner. Thank you. Thank you. I love the description of the ice throughout, though. <laughs> that that was one of the most beautiful descriptive poems that I've heard in a while. Uh, thank you, Generalissimo. Everybody, unmute yourselves and give it up for Generalissimo. Woo! Yes, thank yeah. you. Generalissimo, fantastic work. Woo. Thank you, Magus. And, Cheers. And, and everyone, please. Go to Diane's next workshop. I'm going. I'll be there. All right. So coming up next, we have Miss Butterfly, which I believe is your first time here, right? Everybody unmute yourselves. Give a big open mind, open heart, open arms. Welcome to Miss Butterfly. Miss Butterfly, Butterfly, welcome to Open Mind. Um, okay, so I just had a little of a difficult call with my parents. I'm going to read some poems about that. Um, the first one is called Quiet Night Thoughts, and it's actually based on a poem in Chinese that most Chinese kids like memorize when they're kids. So I'll translate it to you guys. It's called it goes Guang, which is before my bed is the moonlight. As if the ground is covered in frost. I raise my head to look at the moon. I lower my head and think of home. So that's the poem that this poem is calling back. Beyond my mother's bed, I see silver sleet, my grandmother's grief. The jagged edges cut and my blood brings me to that first night she was alone. My mother, seven months old, and I think of how she couldn't bear to break the silence, to speak to a daughter who knew nothing of plains or of mountains, of a family heirlooms or of mianzi. There's always risk in marrying a pilot and accidents happen. You would think that someone who lost her father the same way would fall in love more carefully, but the heart chooses what the heart knows. I hear baby giggles become insult, turn sharp daggers that slice the room into a few shades closer to a tomb. Beyond my bed, I see soft snow, my mother's childhood love. It melts upon the first touch the way she fell into the arms that reached towards her first. She was a shivering, beautiful girl that captured the eyes of all her boys in her class. So when that marriage became loveless, when husband became liar, she clung on the way a child clings to blankets, showed me that the only problem a woman could have is losing that luster in the eyes of men, and stayed up counting onto those things she couldn't receive out loud so she did not hear my cries, did not understand if I needed milk or if I needed a hug, and did not see the love she couldn't give. The song of a daughter's heart is a refrain of her mother's love, and I am a composer. Beyond my daughter's bed, I see a lake, shimmering slivers slit soft waters. She'll see a mama who turned grief and self-loathing into a life-giving oasis of love. <laughs> Thank you, that's my first one. Wow, oh. welcome. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> that's sublime. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Uh, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> There's another one. Um, this one's because I've been going through some heartbreak. <laughs> it's called Blue Moon Medicine. It's after a book called Love Medicine by Louise Erdrich. Very good book if anyone has read it. The ache in my chest wakes me from my dream. A super blue moon approaches and I pick up the, the book to search for a love medicine. 
I'm alone and ill and I put myself here. Long black necks with a mask, they stride upstream with their flocks. I'm talking about Canadian geese. They are big birds with a small kill zone and the book says that they mate for life, that their powdery feathers warm their young for 12 whole moons through the winter with their mate, their parents. And this medicine in the book calls for something dark and dangerous to eat their hearts. In the book, the character did not do it properly, so her love was not secured. I think I'm a perfectionist and suddenly the hunt is in my mind. The way I would carry limp bodies, the way I would defeather, carve, how it drain the blood and how my stomach would twist and churn. I would whisper to the birds my deep gratitude. They give me hope and I have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Raw is the best way to take it, I hear. The male heart for the male and the female heart for me. I wonder about the size, the texture, if there's a point in seasoning it. And what an idea. I crouch with a new gun waiting by this river bank to spy a family waddling. But at the first blaring call and the sight of kind eyes, I start to laugh until tears drizzle down the rock I'm hiding under. The sky opens itself a baby blue and I'm giggling with the wispy clouds that tell me straightforwardly that I'm holding the weapon all wrong and looking for the wrong medicine. Thank you. Wow. Oh, what a joke. Yeah. Um, Was that Yeah, I love fun? how you took the perspectives yeah. that you have. Please return. On please the return. Story we would love to have very you. Very interesting. And your word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Okay. please yeah, come. definitely. Please come back. Um, <laughs> oh my God. The beauty and the of your cadence and just the flow of your voice. It's just hypnotic. I just I think she the needs flow um, is beautiful. She, she needs to be introduced <laughs> to Finn Bell. Yeah. The the I, romanticism, I, the romanticism that you have in your writing reminds me her her writing is different than yours but it has this strong streak of romanticism that yours has mm, i'm sorry who again can you remind me her name finn is, bell finn bell her name is trisha um jesus Gutierrez. and she has a whole series of different uh, open mics and events called finn cabulary um mm -hmm. she's just one of the most amazing people as that are part of this whole international community that you'll meet. Wow. Um, yeah. Thank you. I'm, I really appreciate everyone and the space and Lantern Carrier for inviting me. Thank you. Please yes. do come back. I've, I've mentioned yep. Tina to you as well. Whenever she's doing something and I have the uh, link, I'll send it to you. Where, where are you from? Um, I grew up in Hong Kong and Beijing, um, but I'm based in Swarthmore, Pennsylvania right now. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right, speaking of Lantern Carrier. One of um, us. One of us. One of us. One us of us. us. <laughs> if you could bless us with some words, man, I'd appreciate it, brother. Thank you, my brother. Ah. Move. Oh, he's moving now. Great. I prayed for light. The iridescent beauty of rainbows kissed my aching and yearning heart. I prayed for peace. The beloved embraced me with the stillness of a thousand dawns. I asked for the supernal minstrels. The melody of celestial harps whispered in my core. I prayed for liberation. My soul sang like nightingales as I felt the thrills of grace. I prayed for love. The beloved kissed my lips sweetly. I walked on the breath of infinitude as we became one. I prayed for delight. I knew only the breathless and deathless joy of silence. Poem two. You, my Valentine. Parasites feed on the hosts in order to find a haven. I'm not so different, really, save that I soften my needs with a heart of tenderness to entice the sweet flame of thy bewildering kiss. Come, cute beloved, my lily white heart. You're in the purity of flowers, fragrant wafts to remind me of your shimmering silhouette 
basking in the redolence of jasmines, the light of shooting stars. I would like to look at you, the way I see the moonlight, a lapis lazuli of indigo blue, adorning my soul with its glistening luster, stabbing my core with its shimmering rays. Floating on yon zephyrs of recent times, I have used vermilion roses of charmed memories to bedeck thy intimacy in a bouquet of tiaras fit for the epitome of thy, of thy regal opulence, O Empress of this love. My sweet Shyama, I wish you to guide my life with glimmer as stars do to darkness. My longing burns like a lantern pulling at the glistening ebony of your smile. Let your cheeks embrace this dire agony of my yearning, we dancing together like dawn and rosebuds, merrily twirling in rays of delight. The thrills of my inner citadel serenades thy beauty. Your lips become orchids blossoming in my soul. My pain is a bird of surrender in the light of your silence. My hands bloom like tulips on the glow of thy face. I wish to paint moonbeams on your cheeks of charisma, my soul a hummingbird in your musical voice. I'm willing to drink poison, to sacrifice my all, to lose my raison d'etre in your boundless ocean of delight. Poem three. And let's find it. Good poetry is like a storyline. We condense in a few words the magic of an entire manuscript. Gray clouds veil the sky, but when they part, one clearly sees the perennial heavens. Good poetry is sometimes painful like thorns. We hurt in places where the light enters, carrying with it the wafts of beautiful roses. Yet although charming and magical, how can my musings express the bewildering silhouette of supernal excellence? I say that love is the breath of myriad symphonies, innumerable flowers garland in my spirit. I say it is the core of all majesties, emitting like 10,000 suns, the pinnacle of an amazing light. Yet all these are inadequate translations. Beloved, how can I speak of my joy when we kissed last night in an ocean of dazzling delight? Can they feel this? This wine is only for lovers, drunk with the intensity of longing, where the eloquence of speech is the profundity of a peerless silence. Last night we embraced with tenderness. I was enthralled as the stars sought me, a playmate for the indigo moon. Lost in a world of heavenly enchantment, I knew not who I was, nor the comings and goings of love's resplendent glow. Good poetry at the lips of my sweetheart, dousing the flames of my inner demons, or sweet fire quelling the anguish of my soul. Lantern Carrier, thank you. Ooh. Absolutely hey. sublime. Thank you, Lantern. Nice. Those are beautiful. Go, Lantern. Look, Lantern yeah. and Miss Butterfly are so inspiring. I think you should have a themed open mic for romance. I was thinking while she was reciting that we could do a feature together. So oh, I'll get in touch with you, Miss Butterfly, and we can it. talk about a feature in the near future. Yes. Oh, that would be amazing. I think I, I think we, we, we will complement each other nicely. If you're happy, of course. Of course. Yeah. I would be honored. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so Magus isn't feeling too well. So Skiff, oh. if you don't mind if we could slide him in because we want to hear him before he he goes up, but he's not feeling too well. So that's cool. Oh Magus. Yeah. All right. That cool. Okay. Bless us with some okay. words before Super. you run off ill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't feel so great right now. I had a huge cup of coffee late night, and I'm not, it's not hitting me too well. But I have two poems for you. 
Uh, this was generated, both of these were generated at the Cyclops workshop with Thomas through Finn Bell. Shout out to Catalyst for the form. And shout out to Nona Lee. This uh, I stole the title from the haiku challenge she did. This is called Contumacious Eye. Kubrick, Spielberg, Tarantino, movies, Jedi mind tricks like Dali, right brain, decapitate magic, giant monstrosity flinches, Leviathan getting rhetorical, is I is, is I ain't, weaponized empire, destined, quaint, icon, underestimated, reminded, without meaning, biography, axiom, twisted, thievery corporation, eins, zwei, drei, vier, cranium nation, American questions, dominance, Pavloxid fixes COVID, believe, receive, deceive, sublime, ruinous surprise, ancient Goliath inhales marijuana, cannabis gamatria burning, radio tension strikes matrix, Gaia gives graciously, live, hive, jive, levitate, defenestration, science, spit, ideology, perversion, contumacious eye against authority. Okay, and this, uh, my friends, is um, a Rick poem, Random Interactive Collaboration, also created by Catalyst at the Thomas Workshop through Finn Bell. Um, this was written by 10 people, Shell, Michelle, Carlton, myself, Finn, Martin, Connie, Ed, Generalissimo, and Thomas. And here it goes. Flying into nonsense, serendipitous dream awakens new life without fear. Synecdoche, love, love's hope, insinuating mystical ideas, glowing poetry, concrete mirror reflects impish angels singing glorious madrigals. Autumn halo shone brightly, discovering sounds, bleached skeletons dancing under random insightful stars. Weather, hush, falling through taking a bite, blunderbuss blundering, unicorns tea dancing, transgressing. These fall colors abound, painting rain trees, barking like hounds. Who creates an allegory? Meager windfall gain, birds call gleaming teeth. Bare trees shed deception, loses chaos, devouring orange paradox, unless Gustav Sativa decided on specific universal precepts, leaves rinse cycle goddess, summon uncommon beliefs, serenity, fleeting like useless bubbles, bursting, vortex, imagination, shadow, mercury loquacious whirlwinds, spin wildly unbidden, home forever. There we go. That's yeah. a random interactive collaboration for you. So it, it for those awesome. of you who don't know, um, a random uh, is another – it was premiered at the workshop yesterday. Um, I created a Google Sheet, and we had a little round robin list, and you could put any three words in any three cells at random. And there was like 10 of us who heard – you know, we would take our turn and we all, and, and so like this w poem was pieced together, you know, with no concept in mind, no nothing, and, and just kind of randomly just pieced together in the spreadsheet. You got three words, you can put them anywhere you want, do whatever, you know, and so we just filled out this spreadsheet and then condensed it, and that's what came out of it. It was the world's first, so it was, it was pretty cool. Came out great. Uh, Megas was really great. nailed it this time. <laughs> he was having troubles when he recited at the end of the workshop because uh, someone chose lime green, and he just couldn't read it. He was skipping all the lines with lime green. I'm like, bud, you're skipping lines, but we still love it. <laughs> <laughs> but that that was awesome reading of it, and that was cool, man. Like that was created by uh, ten writers just at random, you know, piecing together uh, the words. Uh, yeah. It was a Everybody. really great workshop. Come to Finn Bell's joint anytime. Those workshops are great. And Thomas, you killed it. You did a you ran, just facilitated a great workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing them uh, for Open Minds. We might do some workshops. So thank you so much. Everybody, unmute yourselves and give it up for the Megas.
Yeah. Thank you for sticking around and do that. We hope that um these next few hours find health and healing in you. And that, you know, tonight when you go to sleep, you'll feel a little better before you go to sleep. We love you, brother. All right, so coming up next, we've got Paul Skiff. If you can unmute yourself, Jedi Master, and bless us with some words, we would appreciate it. Just going to read part of this, this uh, pretty long poem. Ember dream of Venus, remote vista flowers as sleep spark lost, name of incandescent blossom unburst, seed sizzle, voice sound of hand drawn over water, its flicker parts, you glow ghost, the liquid furrow widens human manifestation tasked to weave comprehension into dizzy, singed, doll of wakefulness, needle argues with cloth, knots laugh, their tightness, the first cell in your brain flooded by the balance stitch ripples with a leaf fallen behind moon moon whispers me this because remoteness our bond i have been an autumn thief for so long i am color stained obligated to slight movement and have nothing to worship my heart that yard of idols where my shadow shifts is a wagered possession lives with deck of cards in your acquisitive hunger beneath muscle strings low in your back where five high trumps try points of their symbols to foretell your voice provoked in reply become puzzle wound of child anger from next room beyond what will come true breathing lungfuls of proximity but you cannot lessen the silences feeling deeper under you making startled sense you cannot with natal fervor love and safety excavated those first caresses you had from the world drawn upon you by your mother's vulva still no interruption is larger than a child too comically vicious to endure life expectancy or brisk obituary come back for us a second time jostling destiny by indifference of wild chance, delivering now an ecstatic joke eulogy, not of corporate nun with savage dog that blessed city by menace, leaving us gnawed in half between the devil's white, white body and the ground in this rehabilitated jape disfigured gun of laugh repents talks to itself mouth of punchline struggles through self-esteem chasing catharsis to elude target of the setup line has lips disguised as non sequitur stuck be together by paws reduced to 50 percent the size of guffaw inflated thought now annoyed glance shared between myself and the colluding moon to rise our agreed upon habit avoiding where detonation cancels birthday songs through interstellar leap which once allowed such ambition but now wounds our mouths with chuckle to provoke jerks of happiness that heave out consequence from why i forgot everyone in the building who has been told by raw opportunity to come and take something from you that is what is happening now 
a rapacious looting, this world a larcenous punchline or misdemeanoring one-word answer, physical reaction files into view, the pun shoved up our nose, coerce us to visualize our own catharsis world. I know you are in love with visibility, but your eyes stare mostly distracted without affect and perception. Wet dream of possessing is a small tear in the paper on which erotic explanation for materiality was written before being boiled in libido in forgetting then drunk to cure invisibility that summarized you as opened up to the diurnal rotating monument of disappearance. I am still asking how memory can be half dead. How can this void wait, stir curiosity through me? I loiter here to be enlightened. My Mentors, a brightly colored duck and locked steel shutter, listen to me quack and slam. Today's traffic jam began welded together on an assembly line. Years ago, toilets became the headwaters for monsoons. In the future, streetlights of Mars will be third cousins to a shine on a jar above your stove now. All relational space inside my head is used up and I am orphan thought spontaneous like lucky guess, revelation, or itch in your shoe. Not curious how much nature's random circumstance fits in a front seat, you say, knowing I foresee in the night you will be hypothetically dragged and drag my accomplice autumn yellow moon our consonants scapegoat of convenience, out from its car, lay it dark side up here on our crossed path and tickle it. By this provocation, you also want to discover me, settle me, pacify me, but you are probably ruined. It is unsure whether inquisitively besieged as you are by yourself that you will exist unambiguous much longer. You have spent devalued time in an elevator on an 87-floor ride up through auto-rapture in desperate need to give gifts that still will not appease me. Not enticed, though I inscribed sores on my back, emptying it out long ago, I now feel I thrive in a house, and that refuge is outside beard, closer to not being born, and view of stars there brought, packed sanely tight with asylum, lightless as a dream or good reason, still I want to re-emerge into this world to see the tiny face that toils a honk and bellow when, immune from a cross-lost diversity of packed prison cell or sifted through ponderous density of stadium frenzy, those quarantines gorged by belonging, inverted presence rips as small child's scream that simply jumps the alley. But instead, here, in this removal, necessity is what found the girl who has to take her dress all the way off to pee. Revelation is what tongue trips the drug-blasted woman who jerk dances in a pile of boards. Profligate choice is what lingers through light changes at the corner on a motorcycle with no muffler, just throttle revving. The beginning is to where the cat stalks its shadow, there to switch time off. Blink, blink. I'll stop there. Thanks for your yeah. listening. Skiff, man, you. Oh, the. 
the way you deliver some of your words and rhyme schemes and then the use of like multi like poetry styles of like i just love the flow it's it, it's it's like a like a symphony you know like but broken into every layer you know like it's, it's amazing everybody give it up for pause gift Woo! that was oh. so good that very nice, very, very nice, long, lovely, long. very nice. Never failed to disappoint. Yes. No, the Jedi, yes, the master. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Thank you all. It's great to be here again with everybody. All right, so coming up next, we've got Messiah Payne, who is going to be our next feature. I'm already like coming up with art and flyers for it we're gonna have another friday open mic uh and then october 6th we got none other than messiah Payne doing a feature step for us so i'm excited for that um yeah if you can unmute yourself and bless us with some words i'd appreciate it bud. Uh, uh, thank you so much um, i'm gonna jump right into it there are two poems that are recently written the first is called A Brief Conversation. As the trembling earth pierced my sleep, subsumed by an echo of all the world's violence, I sat along a river, howling with the pleas of endless voices. Saturated by immediacy and impatience, gently imposed from a wound in the air, a preparation of timelessness, a woman wilted beside me who was slow to speak. Eyes like falling glaciers, finally she spoke with a voice like inveterate terror. She asked, how did you get here? Is that what you're asking yourself? And her lips curled into a grin, seducing horror to revelation. Her presence invoked something beautiful and forbidden, cutting a profane scar upon my thoughts. Where am I, said, with harried consternation, attempting to conceal the panic in my voice. She chuckled. You are having a dream, and here is where your awareness of me begins to burgeon with all the temerity of an adult. Now is where your childhood ends. Who are you, I said with a broken whisper. I am the beauty of life when it is undressed. I am the terrible answer of the omnipresent gesture that is being. I am the passage of time and I am time when it dies. Sit with me and hear the prayers of the dead in this river. All their regrets, they plead with me for salvation, for second, third, and fourth chances. They plead for sanctuary. You are here for the same reason they are here. Your time is going to die, and soon you will be in my river, pleading just the same. She giggled and smiled at me. Unlike the grin, her smile was smoothing soothing, merciful, yet absolute. This is my river, and it leads to different lands, where these poor souls wash up and must continue their lives. Their time starts again, until it once again dies, and they are back in my river to wash up somewhere else. I thought I grasped what she was trying to say. So our lives end only to continue somewhere else? Yes, she exclaimed, exactly as though it had never ended. She put her finger in the river and pulled it out. Putting her finger to my lips, a small drop of water fell to my mouth. I began to shake. There was a feeling bordering on relief, an ecstasy almost surmounting the terrific troubles of my soul. I will grant you a wish. Tell me where you wish to go after your time ends and there you will go. But I caution you, your transition will be seamless, as though your previous life was a forgotten dream and you will remember nothing. I grant you this because you have found me before your time and thus deserve a boon. I said, I wish to be somewhere where I never again have to be in your river. She laughed obscenely and plucked a flower from her hair. Very well, I will offer you this flower. It is your consciousness. And when your time ceases, you will return here. If your flower has bloomed, then I will plant it on the green beside the river and you will never again return to the waters of my river. But if it does not, you may never have another chance to escape from me, and you may forever be taken the way these souls are. I bid you good fortune, Messiah. Let this gift be the making of your freedom. She laughed again, this time as warm jest between friends, 
placing her finger in the river. She touched my head as though blessing me, and I awoke. There the flower was on the pillow beside me. I stared at it, dazed and disturbed. But as I began to recall the woman in her river, the flower slowly began to bloom. Wow. And, uh, wow. Hold on, we need a we need a second before you hit us with another one. Like, wow, bro, that was dope, man. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited for your future October 6th, man. Y'all make sure you're there for that. Oh, all right, man, bless us. Um, so this is the second one. It's called The Ashes of My Mind. Could life's only destination meet us like unnerving comedy in the mere seconds it takes to realize love's simple moments? Could it be that we humans are imposters in life and love strips away the lie we covet to keep ourselves closest to an imperceptible and foolish reality? revealing our abuses as we dwindle fastidiously on the lurch of time. My dreams are slowly lacerated in the making of your pain sanctuary. Each step in your coiled brokenness a step too far, where your humanity has not developed nor transcended, but has instead sustained the transitory pleasures of an illusion. Your objections to fate's violent will, where love's making of you stultify your post, your parse relegation of affection to my desperate grasp, Emptiness where you once spoke persists with the embrace of certainty of death. Now you arrange for your vulnerabilities to be kept by the abyssal silence of your mind. In my mind, you were never at love's behest, though you invented my dream of it, merely with a gaze. You haunted every thought and pervaded every hour. I recall I took your hand and told you that you were loved. Debussy couldn't have composed anything more ardent. Now I grow tired and you are as carefully circumspect as ever. Would your love seed the eventual growth of patience and virtue? No. I no longer need your love. I am no longer enchanted by your eyes, your voice, your body. Have you grown brittle, or have I? Like ashes, my thoughts have burned and now evaporate in the space you have left behind, your absence like nonsense chattered from an irreconcilable source. You will be forgotten and I will be kept safely, perhaps even illusorily, by the wisps of what remains my mind telling me gently, she didn't know how to love. She didn't know how to love. Thank you. Wow. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Up you and give it up for Messiah. That's awesome, Messiah. Dang. Woo! Very wow. spooky. <laughs> thank you. That's beautiful, beautiful, man. Beautiful, lovely, straight up. Word. Thank you. Word. So amazing. Sublime. All right. I'm excited for your future, bro. That's going to be cool. I'm already I am working on artwork for you. I think you like it. Um, yeah, so coming up next, we have Milo. 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 Oh, it's your first time here, right? Yes. So everybody knows what to do. Yeah. Unmute yourselves. Give a big open welcome. mind, open heart, open arm. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, I've got uh, three short poems, pretty short, actually. Uh, the first one is uh, goes like this. <laughs> I'm putting my finger up the ass of America. This is not a sexual procedure. I wear gloves. I get a whole hand in. I go farther up, up and away. And now I have my whole head way up inside the ass of America. Here, there is no color but the darkness is so blinding bright, it might as well be white. And uh, poem number two is called 
Tenderloin, which is a neighborhood in San Francisco where I live. Tenderloin. Wolf woman howling on the corner, ragged, her mouth a dark wound. Every day this week at the bus stop, none of us can make out words. Is it even English? Then the old punk rocker says, speed it way up, man. My baby, my baby, they took my baby away. Uh, number three, I, I wrote about actually 33 years ago. Um, and uh, it's called 30 Years Old in Amsterdam for Bob. Our mornings broke like soft gold, running bright over the plates, rolling round town, creaking in funny axles. And when we turned sideways at night, we were invisible. That's it, thank you. Thank you and welcome. And we hope you come back. We want yeah. more. Yeah. Thanks for that. Seriously. Nice. Thank you. I'd give like to everybody on you and give all the love. We did so a little bit prematurely, <laughs> but that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Great. All right, so coming up next, we got Andres Reyes. If you could unmute yourself and bless us with some words, brother, I'd appreciate it. All right, what's happening, everybody? I got a three pack for y'all. Um, it's great because I just found this poem I've been looking for for a long time. I wrote back 10 years ago. Um, it's based on a dream I had. <clears throat> Notorious B.I.G. is making himself at home, eating a cheesesteak sub and sipping down an extra large Coke and Quiznos as I walk into my kitchen after a rough day of school. I scratch my head at the sight this rap mogul resurrected. I ask, are you a hologram? He says in a deep voice that reminded me of Marcellus Wallace in Pulp Fiction. Nah, oh, man, I ain't Tupac. We share a hearty laugh and move on to the next topic, payment. And apparently, I owed the man $160 for weed. Instinctively, I shout, you have a gut up in your waist. Please don't shoot up the place. <laughs> he laughs, cools off, and he finishes off the chorus. Because I see some lace tonight that should be having my baby, baby. And I assured him that I'd get the money. Not remembering that I do not know how to drive, I grabbed the car key sitting on top of the microwave, and I went on my way to grab $160, somehow, some way. I drive this dark blue 2001 Pontiac Grand Am like a pro. And by me pro, I'm talking NASCAR pro. The pedals and steering wheel guiding me through the storm of traffic and rain as if I had been doing this all my life takes me inside a grocery store and out without damaging a single thing. I swear this thing is fucking invincible. As I pump fuel into that hell ride for the first gas station I see, I go find out from a Vietnam vet's names the truth. A long, drawn-out explana explanation that Sean P. Diddy Combs set up Biggie to get shot. The truth tells me the location of Diddy's hideout, and I go on my merry way, venturing through the west side of Manchester, New Hampshire, nearing Diddy's sanctuary, which was a pawn shop front, 
the car deflects motherfucking bullets like Superman's chest of steel as the bass is pounding hard. I, so hard, I feel my heart exploding. The pounding continues onto his face after stunts jumping out of the vehicle, Vin Diesel style, until he gives me a sack of money. As I'm driving home, bringing money and truth, whistling to Bob Dylan's Tombstone Blues, there is a knife fight in the parking lot. I walk past the fight as if I am a ghost. I'm quite used to being ignored, but this time I don't mind it. I honestly don't mind it. When you're famous, you become a target. Fuck fame. I'd rather be invisible in the eyes of others than a visible target. And to think this was all a dream. Okay, now poem two. This is um this was inspired on um my first date with Kate. We were um having this diner date and we both decided to write a poem about what we were eating. So I went a little crazy with this one here. This is simply called gluten-free French toast. Diabetes has never tasted as sweet and as filling as you, you delectable dish of gluten-free French toast. The way you tease me with your stacked figure, your moist texture, the way you drip, drip, drip is just the kind of behavior I expect from you. You naughty mess of cinnamon, egg, sugar, vanilla, butter, and bread. Your divine sogginess drives me crazier than rush hour traffic, making my belly beg to be filled to fulfillment by a voluptuous villain to any diet like you. My insides weep in sadness when we are apart, craving your sumptuous syrup to paint the insides of my mouth with a fine coat of maple brown. Seriously, what the actual fuck are you even? You aren't just food. You are the impossible burger of breakfast, the Mount Everest of culinary excellence, the pinnacle of criminal behavior in my intestinal tract. You always had your way inside me, you filthy animal. Now, come hither. I won't bite. I will bore. Poem number three. Um, I'm just going to jump right into it. It's... I hope you like erotica. One, I pledge allegiance to the nuts I'm about to bust in your mouth. And to the nutshell, it was once encased in one plant, one garden, indivisible, with, my, with miracle grow and pesticides for all. Two, I have no idea what I just wrote. Three, these insomnia meds aren't working. Cannabis has been missing the mark, but hey, at least it broke the dam of my creative flow. I thought it'd be clever to compare skeeting to eating someone actual edible nuts. Kind of ironic, eh? <laughs> it's nuts. Now, give me credit for trying something outside the box, but now I'm on a topic of boxes. Four, I want to stuff my package with as much styrofoam inside your box. I want my tongue to Lewis and Clark all over your frontier, I'll manifest my destiny in mapping out all of your turn-ons. I want my cock to be a sinking ship plunging into your Mariana Trench. I'm going to go deep. Challenge your deep. If, you, if I were ever in a video game, it'd be Donkey Kong Country because, baby girl, you drive my banana absolutely bananas and you put the rumble in my jungle. I want my ditty to hop into your barrel and blast right in. But hey, if monkey business isn't your thing, it's Gucci. I see you more of a Super Mario gal, and that's cool. I respect your preferences. I also respect your body and, like, sacred hollow ground. But that said, I'm looking forward to be working your pipes better than any Super Mario brother out there. If our sex game were like Mario Kart, I would be driving you crazy. And if it were Mario uh, Mario Party, I'll be I'll be making you the superstar. Princess, I'm gonna take my sweet ass time 
eating that fine peach of yours, making sure that every drag my tongue makes a scrape moistly against every possible nerve ending your clitoris holds in, turning your clit into the bubble from the trouble board game as I make you pop and roll your eyes to the back of your head with every thrust and motion I make inside your walls as you flood and leak your pussy nectar down your legs and onto the bed sheets. When it comes to making love, it's no game to me. However, I'm in it to win it and give you sexual ecstasy. Thank you. Yo. Yo, I'm glad I you, didn't wear makeup on my eyes. Right. Yeah. You crushed yeah. that. Yo, everybody like, yeah. loves you so awesome. Give it up, bro. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Speechless. <laughs> Speechless, man. Wow. All right. Yeah, Yo, nice, could bro. say, uh, is your turn next? What do we got in response to that? <laughs> All right. So my response is it's not a response, but kind of. Um, on the on-ramp to the highway, I asked aloud, universe, what messages do you have for me today? And before my eyes, these angel numbers appear on the back of license plates. Repeating sequences are like a hook and bait, captivating my attention until I interpret the message it's trying to convey. Then have an exchange with the thoughts inside my brain. Deciphering the codes hidden in plain view, I see 222. Two, two. That means I'm on the right path and I am protected. Thank you, universe. A car whips past me, 444, and that means trust your intuition. I had been thinking maybe I should slow down because I'm going a mile a minute on a highway possibly full of idiots when I got that message. Another car whips past me. On the license plate read, Big Daddy. Um... You bet your ass I took a picture of that license plate. I then saw Fat Cat on another license plate, then another that said eight grandkids. So I said, fuck that, Dre, keep that shit wrapped. I don't want any happy little accidents because it won't be too happy. I might be on birth control, but it's 99% effective. So that means that there's a 1% chance that one of your seedlings could impregnate me. Now... I wouldn't mind a cream pie for dessert, but I keep hearing about pregnancy all over the place. And in symbolism, that means a new beginning. But I pray that it won't be one that comes from your willy. Yes, this is a Rasta Nana. Don't ask. All right, bye. I uh, could say thank you for that. Uh, yeah, that was amazing. Whoa. Everybody on mute and give it up for Kate. Wow. <laughs> That was dope. That was dope. Both to everything together, both of y'all together. That was dope. Back and forth. Perfect. Perfect, man. Perfect. Yeah. So dope. So dope. Oh, uh, coming up next we got Robert Fleming. Uh, do you need to share a screen? Do you need to host? Yes, please. Good. Good evening. I'm uh, Robert Fleming. I'm a visual poet from. Uh, Lewis, Delaware, and I'm going to start with doing a response to our host's uh, brain image. I'm still waiting to be able to share the screen. I made you co-host, so you should be able to do it now. Just, uh, try. Um, I think it says that somebody else is sharing the screen. There we go, okay, thank you. So this is called uh, Memories of Southern California. And it was the cover of uh, an edition of Four Feathers Press about a year ago. And I it, it's about the most memorable things and places in Southern California, like, 
surfing Silver Strand State Beach in Oxnard, Gallo Winery in Mira Loma, Hollywood in Los Angeles, 7.2 El Mayor Koopa earthquake in Baja, which was the largest earthquake in California. And I'm working on another uh, art series um, where I'm able to submit uh, three images. Um, the series is called Bears at the Trapeze, and I'm going to be asking for some input. Um, this is the first image, and I'm I'm good with it. The second and third one I'm still working on. Um, this is one of the options. And this is the second option where I created the ability for the bear to bend their legs, which is a very rare um, motion in bears. So I'm gonna stop here and I encourage people either in the chat or just to un unmute and say whether they prefer the bear on the left or the one on the right, the one with the straight leg or the bent leg. I like I like the straight legs. I like the straight legs too. Because it's so got to be the straight legs. leg for me as well. Yeah. It, a bear is a trapeze artist. Like they're so. <laughs> Yeah. If you could, if you had, you know, like on the one that has the bent leg, if one leg was bent and one leg was straight, you know, kind of like doing a kick in a way, but one of the legs would have to be inside the trapeze. That's the biggest problem with that. Is that yeah, the, the problem with that is with the legs bent, it just makes it harder to identify what you're looking at as a bear. It's like when it's straight, it obeys a rule of thirds much better, so it's more aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're looking for disharmony, then I would say like the bent bear and then make in the rest of it more disharmonious. Yeah, where is the bent bear's arms? They seem to be not there. That is um, weird, yes. <laughs> yes, I have to admit that making the 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 bear's legs bent for a bear was something I called uh, graphic surgery. Um, but I think I'm going to go with the straight leg on this one. Let me show you the other one. And this is the second option where they're still in the air. So it's either the net, the net. <laughs> or, yeah, like or the net because it's because there's ah, where's the danger? I take like away, the take net. away the net. No net. They're bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Milo, you you like the one without the net? I do because yeah, it's just more exciting. Look, look, I like I like the net because it looks like those bars are actually meant for push pull-ups because it looks like they can actually reach it so it just looks like they're chilling the bros chilling in between okay so i'll, I'll just have to, it sounds like some people like the net and some people like the bear still in the air so i'll just have to uh it's up uh, in the air huh? yeah it's up in the air <laughs> And I'll yeah. just have to make the choice uh, myself. Yeah. And thank well, you for your input, Robert. Robert Brian. Yeah, Robert, I mean, what do you want this image to do? What do you want it to accomplish? Damn. Well, the, the one on the left is humorous because they fell from the trapeze, but the one on the right is more exciting, like an action. Uh, figure. So and they both. I I am I like the action figure oh, okay. because that's what the trapeze is supposed to be. So I I probably will go with the bears in the air. All right. Well, thank Sorry. you for letting me uh for letting me share. Um. I wanted to share that 
my last series, uh, Bears at the Ballet Bar, is currently on display at the Camp Rehoboth Art Gallery. And my next uh, graphic series, which is um, on disco balls, will be online in synchronized chaos at the beginning of next month. And thank you for letting me share my bears. Thank you for sharing your bears in the air, your bears in the nets. Everybody, unmute yourself and give it up. Bears. All right, bears. Yeah. Thank you. Bears. That was cool. Oh, bears. Very cool. It just gets your mind into a different headspace, so it's pretty fresh. Yeah, it's, I, I was viewing, viewing it as almost like a, um, a social experiment, too. Like, you know, would you prefer the bears in the air with the air of danger or the bears on the yeah, net? You yeah, know? like market like, research. <laughs> yeah, right? It was, it was, it was very interesting. Um, coming up next, we have the lovely Miss Diane. Mary Ford, if you can unmute yourself and bless us with some words, we would appreciate it. Hello, everyone. It's always a pleasure to be here. I do have a workshop. Art in the Basin um, is uh, hosting, and it is three series. The first one was Wednesday just passed. The next one will be next week, and then the last one will be October 4th, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's called Space Triggering. Of course, it's a free class. And we just want you to have fun. Thank you so much, Brian, for bringing it up and for writing a piece uh, that uh, came out of the workshop. So it's a quick hour. I go through a lot of uh, examples. And uh, we do a lot of work together. And each session is standalone. So if you didn't come last week, that's OK. If you can't make it next week, the next one, one after that, the last one. It's October 4th. Each one is a standalone session. So, uh, you know, please feel free if you'd like to come from 7 to 8 p.m. I have two pieces that I'd like to read tonight. The first one is by Jericho Brown. I'm sure you probably know the book. It's called The Tradition by Jericho Brown. And if you don't, please add him to your library. And this piece is called Hero. He never knew one of us from another. So my brothers and I grew up fighting over our mother's mind. Like sun-colored suitors in a Greek myth, we were willing to do evil. We kept chocolate around our mouths. The last of her mother's lot, she cried at funerals, cried when she whipped me. She whipped me daily. I am most interested in people who declare gratitude for their childhood beatings. None of them took what my mother gave. Waking us for school with sharp slaps on our bare thighs. That side of the family is darker. I should be grateful. So I will be. No one on earth knows how many abortions happened before a woman risked her freedom by giving that risk a name, by taking it to breast. I don't know why I'm alive now, that I can still impress the woman who whipped me into being. I turned my mother into a grandmother. She thanks me by kissing my sons. Gratitude is black, black as a hero returning from war to a country that banked on his death. Thank God, it can't get much darker than that. That's Hero by Jericho Brown out of his book, the tradition. And the next piece I'm going to read is what I've written. It is in the new anthology Tesoro. Just came out last week. 
uh, it's our first Everyone edition. Everyone go buy it for sure. You gotta post <laughs> links. Tesoro. Yeah, and uh, the piece I'm going to read is what I wrote. My contribution is titled, What's Your Baby's Name? Right, love? This child I see, yet how many go missing that we would prefer to shake our heads solemnly, shoulder shrug away and tend to forget. This child I see, you would rather forget unless this child shares your last name, was a cousin on your mama's side, was a neighbor, packed your groceries, washed your car for spending money, or attended the same camp as your kids? Or this child you had an affair with and you knew they were a minor? Oh, wrong audience. I had an accountability moment, thought you might want to entertain. This child I see has a name. It's not whore, trash, worthless, rag, or waste of space. Not named mistake. Not I hate your daddy and too bad you look just like him. Not named money ticket, not earn your keep, and not dummy. This child I see deserves attention, but unfortunately too often resorts to negative behavior to get attention because some attention is better than none in their eyes. So, who is pathetic? This child I see can't envision a future beyond this present pain repeating itself over again with different authors from different sound bites, biting at their hide, their minds, their psyches. This child I see either puts on a brave face or shirks away deeper and deeper away from the world. For all this child knows of the world is a formula of use and abuse. Let's not lose them. This child is one of many we must retrieve from being devalued by marketers traffickers, and for some, their own treacherous, wayward, and generationally wounded families. Tell each child they have potential, are brightness, are beautiful, are lovable, and loved. Whisper that in the next abused child's ear and take their hand towards healing and hope. Pay attention and act and report and don't stop aiding the children we all see. Please. DMW. Thank you. Whoa. Wow. Beautiful. A victim of child abuse. Thank that you. Was Amazing. Abuse. Wow. Amazing. Very beautiful. And go buy the Tesoro anthology. What? Mm. We need to be sitting with Love that me. one. Right. So it looks like Shocky left. So coming up next, we've got Nemo Soom. If you could bless us with some words, brother, I'd appreciate it. Um, I'm not. Have I have I done the piano here? Yes. 
Yeah. And I missed it one time. The one time I was sick, I'm laying on the couch. I, <laughs> I couldn't hear, but I was watching the show. And I see you on the piano, and I'm like, what is going on? But then you played it the next week, and I was like, okay. So, um, so I'm thinking... Love- Tonight, maybe I'll, I'll do um, the Moonlight Sonata instead of doing the um, the poetry. Um, can you hear that? Oh, 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 no. Okay, I've turned the original sound for musicians on. Um, how's that? Okay.
Thank, Thank you. you, Nemo. Yo, um, what a I beautiful performance. Yeah, Man. what a beautiful, uh, arguably one of the greatest pieces ever composed. Wow. And that's oh, awesome, bro. You just crushed it. Um, how many instruments do you play? Um, just just the piano. I played the tuba when I was in uh, high school, but that's been many moons ago. Maybe you're going to have to pick it up and give us a hoot one day. All right. So we're going to keep this thing going. Everybody, one more time, give it up for Nemo soon. Woo! Very nice, man. You know, I used to play the piano when I was younger. And I was actually very good, but I hated Saturday morning lessons, so I quit, and I regret that ever since then. And you just took me back there, man. So thank you, man. And I love, I love the Moonlight Sonata. I've always had so beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much, man. We love you, brother. All right, coming up next, we got Daniel Fernandez. Yo, I love that. Uh, open mind should be there, man. That, that was so cool, man. I appreciate that. That's the second one you've done, man. I really appreciate you, brother. So I'm excited to hear what you got. Uh, so yeah, if you could bless us with some words, we would all appreciate it. Sure. So I put my link tree in the chat for anyone curious on where to find me or get the book. Um, I have two poems for today. One of them I've written about a month ago. And that one's called The Dark Side of Poetry, which is the darkest poem I've ever written. And then I have another one that was written about a week ago that's called I Saw You Fade and Chose to Run Away, which is like a song. So I'm going to start with that one and then ease into the dark. But <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right. This is I Saw You Fade and Chose to Run Away. I woke up and thought about you today, thinking about our love and how it used to be praised, using our memories to have euphoria pervade, regardless of my reasons I can never persuade. I bought a ring with loyalty to have a promise engraved. I don't know how you're coping, but I'm emotionally drained. Maybe if I inspired our vision could have been saved. I saw you fade and chose to run away. Falling in love is not a choice. To stay in love is. It's our hearts beating in sync that had me convinced. Run aside discipline and walk with forgiveness. I danced with solace while desire was evicted. Being a professionist can result in stress and depression. I forgot about myself while manifesting our connection. My sanity was demolished from your hurricane of intentions. I prepared for the worst but not a recession, distracting our tedious lives by traveling over our budget. We set plans we can't afford, and then you wonder why I'm upset. Money that's not managed correctly becomes an ocean of regret. If I'm trying to overcome poverty, why am I playing Russian roulette? Your heart is pure, but your subconscious mind is illogical. Your words sting like a bullet ant, and yet I'm responsible. I'm frazzled, but I simmer down to avoid trips to the hospital. I choose to be with you, and you act like that's optional. My bed feels empty, like an abandoned event. I can finally move my legs since your body I no longer lie against. Cuddling with a pillow since you got up and left. With all that time alone, it feels like solitary confinement. We always want more choices than we can cope with. But when things go south, you want to plead the fifth. I could be innocent with a guilty verdict. I'm suffocating from being so constricted. I woke up and thought about you today, thinking about our love and how it used to be praised, using our memories to have euphoria pervade. Regardless of my reasons, I can never persuade. I bought a ring with loyalty to have a promise engraved. I don't know how you're coping, but I'm emotionally drained. Maybe if I inspired, our vision could have been saved. I saw you fade and chose to run away. I love you became a phrase that diminished as time moved on. So I write what's crucial, that's the way it's drawn. Our passion was perfect until your presence was gone. Intimacy was treasured like a favorite song. We make most of our decisions unconsciously, relying on knowledge, presuming you'll be done properly. I can't breathe while confronted by a government monopoly. Prices double then triple. What happened to democracy? Our brains start eating it self if it doesn't get enough sleep life will feel incomplete and somewhat bleak actions lead to consequences and anxiety begins to increase an argument surfaces and it's never discreet 
you change for two reasons. Either you learn enough that you want to, or you've been hurt enough that you have to. I respect your effort, but verbalize life from my point of view. Don't trust the internet because most of it is untrue. Patience is not the ability to wait, but the ability to keep a good attitude while doing so. You have to work on yours, but apparently you already know. I'm always there for you for the times you felt low. You screwed with my kindness and now I'm paralyzed like a scarecrow. Once you fall in love, there's no going back to being friends again. You say I'm not your soulmate. What a way to offend. I have my hands behind my back as if I'm being apprehended. There's limits to a relationship, but you found a way to transcend. I woke up and thought about you today. Think about our love and how it used to be praised. Using our memories to have euphoria pervade. Regardless of my reasons, I can never persuade. I bought a ring with loyalty to have a promise engraved. I don't know how you're coping, but I'm emotionally drained. Maybe if I inspired, our vision could have been saved. I saw you fade and chose to run away. Thank you. That's the first one. I got to find the other one. Bars on bars on bars. I love to sing it too, man. Make sure y'all <laughs> support you. this young man and buy his book, Emotional Defibrillator. We love it. On the second. Now, this one you have to bear with me because it is literally the darkest thing I've ever written. <laughs> and I've written a lot of dark stuff. So this is called The Dark Side of Poetry, which was written a month ago. Welcome to the gloomy side of creativity. In this poem, we'll touch base on poetry specifically. Make your hair stand up like static electricity. I'm sending a voicemail without calling because time can't be taken seriously. A happy heart is a healthy heart. Jumpstart your ambition, but not like a car. As a writer, I jot down thoughts that I tend to disregard. If poetry wasn't a thing, most of us would be a victim of self-harm. I hear a lot of thank yous. But no sorries. There seems to be no boundaries, like an orgy. Some people would die if it means fame and glory. I just want to be a poet who shapes history. Nothing holds you back more than your own insecurities. Life is hard to manage considering its volatility. Composition books filled with remedies. Being a poet is a profession due to its dexterity. I have poems that will never see the light of day. I would pen my anger then ignore it like a survey. I would say goodbye and let my reasons be displayed. Those who have considered suicide knows the feeling never goes away. I made a noose and used it like a scarf. Let the rope squeeze until I couldn't feel my arms. My brother walked in, so of course I was alarmed. That was over 10 years ago before I counted cards. Sometimes I take a drive and ponder on life. Gas is expensive now, so my thoughts roam late at night. My back is glued to the wall, so I have no choice but to write. Whining about buyer's remorse, but that happens at any price. Life has a funny way of proving us wrong. If I did what I wanted to a decade ago, my book would have never come along. I would be six feet under and disenchanting my mom. My enemies would be pleased and my soul would be calm. Being a poet is more than just some pretty words on paper. We throw our souls into a page, divulging on a disclaimer, a turmoil of emotions that we somehow conjure, stabbing our innocence, changing our behavior, stuffing quibbles in plastic containers. Confessional poets are just as dangerous as Mother Nature. In 1932, a beautiful woman was born in the middle class. At age eight, her father was diagnosed with diabetes, which surprised her like a smack. His leg was amputated due to gangrene. Afterwards, he didn't last. She never forgave him for leaving so soon. It's quite sad. Sylvia Plath, pining on a marriage that collapsed, writing about how she felt and the events from her past. Depression was around like a shadow that can grab. Her unfaithful husband led to the episodes that she had. Two kids later in 1962, Lazy Lazarus rose controversy like a pride flag. Attempted suicide three times and she succeeded on her last. She put her head in the oven until her consciousness detached. She sealed the room where her kids were at with tape, towels, and cloth so that the fumes couldn't attack. But after the bread and butter snack. There are no birthday letters from Ted Hughes that can bring her back. Ossia Wevelt, Ted's mistress, years later did something similar, in fact, and took her four-year-old with her, which was a tragedy and a half. Now that Sylvia's gone, her collection makes a national impact. It sucks to know that death is what it takes in order for your work to be looked at. If poetry was medication, it would be my placebo effect. Funny how that works, since I keep jumping through subjects, rubbing agony 
agony against a cheese grinder as I explain why I'm depressed. My sorrows are floating on a kayak that's headed west. Robert Lowe, a confessional poet that was the prime of the 20th century. His poems was like a gruesome history lesson within a tornado of his memories. His death was unexpected and we were hit with adversity. We all live. We are in a political swamp and he had the power to stab with that with amiability. Ambiguous poems with a perfect balance of complexity. Let him rest in peace. That's what he needs. Family isn't who you're born with. It's who you would die for. The dark side of poetry makes you dwell in remorse. Taking a bite of life, pretending it's a s'more. Laugh about the experience, hoping faith will be restored. Choking on love poems from the broken hearts of strangers. I fall back in happiness due to being butchered by failure. My circadian rhythm isn't in sync with my behavior. Sometimes I finish a poem because I ran out of paper. I can't sit alone because pain and I will be in discussion. My mistakes will be remembered, which will delay exaltation. Poems of suicide, questioning my reputation. Evidence of hopelessness, like a paranormal investigation. Nothing is as sweet as it seems. Crying over a lament within reality and dreams. Bewailing existence because no one cares to intervene. Hugging poetry can turn us into printing machines. Life through stand at my eye so that I can endeavor. It leaves me speechless like Ted Hughes last letter. My poems are the cuts of regret that demons consider pleasure. The denial of death in a world full of pressure. The truth hits harder than Lucille, the bat. Under surveillance but working for scraps. Is the paycheck worth the stress? Perhaps. Once I close my book, my poems take a nap. Poetry is dark, and some people are too oblivious to listen and observe. The bottled up agony that can't be ignored. I'm bleeding in front of you, and you're holding the sword. Just watching me die leisurely as I stand here and perform. Thank you. Oh boy. Yeah, that was pretty dark, man. It was I dark. That one, I, Daniel. Yeah, I love that. The way you ended it, too. Was, oh, that was strong and that was powerful. Everybody, oh, meet yourself. Give it up for Daniel Fernandez. Woo! That was ridiculous, man. Dude, like you just stretched the imagination. <laughs> like for real that was crazy that was awesome that was Love awesome it. Love family. It. That was awesome wow family wow. you wow. die for fantastic mm. so dope so dope mm -hmm. all right coming up next we got mm -hmm. frog corpse and, and cp just came in the building infinite luck we got a nice little lineup coming up so y'all stay tuned but now Frog Corpse, if you could unmute yourself and bless us with some words, brother, I'd appreciate it. Can you hear me? All right. I'm going to do this one to warm up because I didn't know if that would fucking kick in. This is a quick one. Old November, known December, he asked her why he should remember why October's hollow as June lamented. It may spring if March surrendered, February floods for April's washing, beautifully bathed in apple blossoms. July, her spark, her heat will stoke the fires of heart for dear August most. January, oh, January, look at Orion. All right, imaginary friends. I will tell you in the dark that my family is now dead and gone. No more home and no more wrong. No more places to keep running from. Now I've found in my head all my friends come out to play without eyes and without face. I let them dance and watch them rave as their orbs shine on their crooked spines. Decomposed, they twitch and smile with ebon skin, grayed and peeled, shedding all with every spin. In their silence, losing dress, they breathe so softly on nape of neck. Got one more, all right. <clears throat> Into the star stream, watching past the star stream. Let me keep you in my memory. Hold me now. I want to die. Fuck this world and our last goodbye. You now will see I won't make it to the other side. And do you remember how I tried the moment you met me? And what I ought to see was it everything you thought I ought to be? I guess not. 
if I have to ask these questions to an empty soul who was never there then. So to my boys and to my brother and to my crew, I've done what I've done. This is all I can do. So you can bleed for me as I bled for you. For when I am gone, I am gone for good. So explain. Why should I remain here to suffer along with you? Wasting away a few more years. Is this the definition of brotherhood? Existence, we live no more. A pattern of ritual, remaining unfurled. Carry on, wayward soldier, dreaming of love, a ghost to its moments. And I got one, one last one and I'm fucking off. I'm scrolling down to it right now. Called one stick thought, almost there. Fuck it, body in a box. There we go, I'm tired of scrolling. I moved a forest with a match. I've talked to ghosts of my past. I've seen people made of wax, and I only know sorrow when I laugh. Pestilence will keep me going long enough to see me choking. It's reminisce on these days gone, placing my body in a box. So burn a lantern. When I'm hauled, as too much confliction is to bear alone. <laughs> I am sand, you are stone. I am glass, I am gone. You are winter, you are thrown, bludgeoned into furrowed bone and chartreuse scarring, weakened tongues with sharpened messages to whom and from a man of nothing. I am no one, so damn the bullet and damn the gun, so one click left. To taste the warm. Thank you. Yo, my boy Frog, as always, haunting is so dope, man. Um, I'm really hoping that you're gonna be able to do this October 13th thing, man. But you know, we'll see how your schedule works because I would love to hear a whole feature set from you, brother. Yeah, everybody, unmute yourselves and give it up for Frog Corpse. Lovely, lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely, very nice, very nice. Fine form tonight. Very spooky, very mysterious. As always, oh. fantastic work. I love frog man, it's so dope. All right, coming up next, we got Kazi Kaz, um, and I believe we got some letters to go through still, brother. So if you can unmute yourself and bless us with some words, I'd appreciate it. Hello, hello everyone. I hope everyone is good. Um, so as y'all remember, or if y'all remember last time I was here, I left off with the letters uh QRS from my ACs. So I shall bless y'all tonight with the next three um T U V. So without ado, present to you the letters T U and V. Today, totally totaling the teemingly totalitarian totalitarianism truly tends to tastelessly take on tawdrily tough twists and tenaciously tempestuous turns, thus tauntingly tainting tacitly trustworthy tendencies. 10,000 trustingly truthful trustees truthfully trusted the truistically tapestry trustworthiness of trifingly tyrannical triumvirates. Truantly televised trends, toxically tempted, titanically turning tide, tastefully touring thoughts. This tremendously trivializing trap tormentingly tricks these terrestrially traumatized tenants into trillions of tantalizingly tricky treats. So trepidatiously tread on this turbulently trying and treacherously tribulating trek, torrentially tore tenderly taught teachings that transcendentally traverse topographically taxing terrains. Teamwork, y'all. Unfortunately, upsettingly uneducated utterances usually undo upliftingly unprecedented unity. Ultimately, unusually urgent upheavals of undying utopians unanimously urge utterly unusual uselessness. USA's unstably untamed and unjustly unfair uncle is undoubtedly unfit, unimpressingly uppity, unsuspectingly uninformed, undeniably untidy, and unreliably unhinged. 
uniquely understanding urbanites from Utah to Uruguay under understandably unacceptable unification, uninhibitably unite usefully untapped unions by unofficially unmasking, unsettling utilization of unilaterally unimpeded uniformity. It's up to us. Now, voraciously vicious vernaculars with violently vivacious verbiage, vulgarly validate vehemently vile vaultings of vigorously vicissitudinal vocabularies, vulgarly validating vehemently vile vaultings. Vertel valiantly vibrant verb was venerably visionary, viably vocating virulently valid vengeances. Vicariously, vitally vast volumes of vestigially virtued vessels, voluminously vote for villainously viperous verdicts with velvety violinic vintage. Now, variably variegated vagabonds, vulnerably vowed or vertically vitalized, virtuously vacant vipers, very verifiably voiced vigor, virtually vanquishes the vividly vague voices of regularly venomous vultures, and vice versa. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Kazi Kaz, bro, killing it. Um, yeah, man, I want to see what you do with the Cyclops poem. Yeah. Uh, it sucks it, you. You couldn't get in. Eventbrite sometimes doesn't send out the right Zoom links. So you missed out on the workshop yesterday. But, uh, like, I'll do a private session with you. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll hit me up, you know what I'm saying? And I'll show you the piece. I would love exactly. for you to do a Cyclops fall, man. And see what I would you love do to with do it. it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. I would love to. All right. Thank you so much. Everybody, on meet yourself. Woo! Give it up for Kazi Kazi. You're very welcome. Thank you, thank you, right, thank coming you. Coming up next, we have Love Infinite. If you can unmute yourself and bless us with some words. Yo, that feature y'all did for us, oh my God, thank you so much, man. Like, that was amazing. That was so amazing. Thank you, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking at something, but that was amazing, cause um, that poem that you do is so inspirational. I... <laughs> I don't know what I would have to do to convince myself to sit down and put so much um, pure work and dedication in a poem, but you did it and sheesh, gotta get like you, sure. Um, I'm looking for a poem, for, for a poem. you know, I'm so sorry. Uh, yikes. I need to cut off these uh, notifications as well. I, I don't know. Can someone go first before me? I'm sorry. I don't All want right. to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Prince P is up next. So, Prince P, Prince P, if you could unmute yourself and bless us with some words, I'd appreciate it. I'll be reciting two poems tonight. First poem we call. Oh, come save us. The puffy, powdery, powdery white cloud blue in silence. It looks so glorious, like it's oh, colorful, oh. lemon, friend. The Lord is marvelous to us. Why do we destroy the earth beauty? Why pollute the towering marshmallows in the sky? Why don't we save the earth? Why is it Money over everything. I can't seem to grasp this. So befuddled. But all the mercenaries offsetting the beauty for the, the, the money. God, come save us. They uh, call the untitled right now. White clouds, I float. Always in the air, airing for the sky. Sky high, I am. On rainy days, on rainy days, I am drenched in God's tears. On sunny days, I'm nature's friend. The closer we get to the bird days, I grab hold of my wintry apparatus to protect me from the rigidness. Other days, I walk on snow and see people make snow angels by children. While I wait for the for hot chocolate season, I might as well enjoy fall. Poem. 
Yo, so dope as always, man. Appreciate you. Everybody, Welcome. come meet yourself and give it up. Fabulous. Wonderful. All right, so love infinite. Have you found your peace? Are you ready? I'm as ready as I will be. Yes. <laughs> um. So I guess the piece that I chose is, is going to be called um. Love to the light and dark. Um. So yeah. Uh, they move like light, but they're forever grounded in the darkness. And when they close their eyes, those pesky, perceptive, biased devices, it's really not so dark anymore. Have you ever closed your eyes so tight? Have you ever shut them so hard attempting to defend yourself from the brightness of day, the darkness of night, the fear of seeing, being cornered? Irises have nothing on lotuses and it's not to compare the two, but to remind you that mud and dirt and grime and disgust can be oh so beautiful, depending on what eyes you see with, get this, I was but a seed planted and propagated, but my natural habitat believed in the Illuminati and murder more than they believed in themselves and life. Oh, the pain, oh, the rain that stems from hatred and the refusal to love oneself, one's collective and see what the eyes cannot, I would say, I hate slavery, but every happening had a purpose and it was liberation. God holds the hands of baby society and guides the teeter-tottering feet too soft, too plump, too sensitive to true liberation, cold, hard truths like we were born free and gravity isn't true at all. We can actually fly, but we keep buying flights. How long can you fly though before needing, wanting, desperately wanting to touch ground again like a hawk, a vulture, an eagle, the strongest bird returns to nest. Nobody, and I mean no one, was born in the sky. Earth is for birthing, creation, and nurturing. Earth is for laying feet laying head, comfort. Tell me who you let convince you it was anything but love. I can't remember the names of every single person who infected me with the venom of disbelief and love and magic and magic being good and God being good, but a few can a few broken parts and pieces hidden in my recesses want to say, I hate you for that. But me, I don't hate you. I see your purpose. Even villains have a story. Every villain was too poisoned and positioned by a greater villain, hoping to pass down the dark arts for which I have found the defense for which I have become the cure. I don't hate you for it. Not, not anymore. I love you. I love you for being the best you could be. I love me for believing in you instead of me for believing in something, anything, something. But oh, how disappointing my gullibility. Oh, how feeble my faith. Thank you for showing me the way. Thank you for leading me back inside my body when you took my body and my breath and my hope and my freedom and my consent away. What? a mind game. 
Thank you for seemingly taking choices from me, leaving me cornered by my highest self only. Who pulled me out of the fire? It was God and they came in the body, in the shape and in the form of my ancestors and they came in the body and the shape and the form of myself who is nothing with or without them and then I saved me from my creativity from my wild imagination I saved me from believing in you so I could finally believe in me thank you Thank you for holding my hand, God. Thank you for helping me to see the light and darkness as one thing. Thank you for illuminating, I mean illuminating that all the worlds a sea that we divided into oceans of emotion and cultures, colors and races and nations because of self-hatred and other self-condemnations. I won't live like that. I won't live that lie. I don't like it there. But once I tried, but maybe once I did. Now I know the truth, the earth is emerging from under the water, the very core of us to nurture, to love, to grow, to evolve, to birth, to create seismic waves in the mantle and crust waves so powerful, all the skeletons shake to move our tectonic plates and just wait for someone to feed us all the things we couldn't grow, couldn't get ourselves, all the love we couldn't get ourselves, all the love we couldn't get ourselves all the love we couldn't get on our own lonesome never alone never alone I know now I know ultimate and ceaseless freedom to the battered beast who doesn't detest its solitude but bask in its never-ending freedom instead Blessings befall the brave beast who sojourns the solitude, becomes the solitude, and thanks me and you for leaving, for getting the fuck on. Thank you. Thank you. That was a journey and a half, yo. Like, yo, crush it, everybody. Unmute yourself and give infinite love for love, infinite. <laughs> That was beautiful. I was so and I, I really so beautiful. Word, word. Appreciate the eye of Horus. It's a symbolism. Yeah, for your makeup's crazy. Did you go to the Cyclops one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, ever since I read, there was like this one particular story, like old fairy tale I read about a cyclops. I think I always wanted to be one. Yeah. <laughs> like on the low. <laughs> you gotta, did, do you know about the cyclops poetry form that Catalyst made? You're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get you on a cyclops poem. Okay, no, I think somebody did do a poem here, like a couple, a couple of them, right? So I did witness. Yeah, I did a, I did a workshop. Uh, yesterday with Fincabulary, and we did the uh, Cyclops one. Congratulations! Fun, it is not an easy thing to to accomplish. It's it's either. challenging. You have to use only words. But I read my it's second one earlier. One, it was... one eye per word, and you find that a lot of the words you think have one eye have two eyes. Two eyes, yeah. <laughs> you either have to just totally cut it out or find a synonym, but that's really hard to do. It's a very challenging exercise. It's it's fun though. It, and uh, yeah, I think you would do good with it. Maybe I'll have to I, try to write an eye poem, a Cyclops poem. Yes. Well, one of the things is is you have you have a word with a certain ending on it, like E T I C. So you just Google words that end in E T I C, and then you have <laughs> other words that end in different endings like that you can't really do ing because there's a million ings but there are certain things and it went through like from 15 down to however many words that end in etic so it had with every every group in 15 14 13 letters you know so when you google certain certain things like that it'll give you words of different lengths you know and you just you just look to see if it'll if it'll fit on the line that you're using so that you can have a, a rhythmic rhyme going if it'll uh you know without sounding 
unbalanced or not on not on theme. It's it's a hard it's a very hard it's, thing to do. Yeah, it's a fun exercise, man. It's straight out of the mind of my beautiful wife, Catalyst. Oh. So to have the ending the ending of the words have to be no, no, no. No, no, no. It's, the only rule is it, every single word in the poem has to have one eye and one eye only. No more, no less. But every word in the poem has to have only one eye because Cyclops only likes words with one eye. Is how she says it. Oh, by so, the way, uh, who, who who did that little uh, illustration of the Cyclops character? That was me, but it was based on a photo that my wife took of this uh, little Cyclops guy that she got me. Okay. It, was, it was really good. Well, thank you. Um, all right, so we were going to have uh, Karen, but um, she seems to have left. It's late over there where she's at. So closing us out tonight, we got CP Mays. And um, tell us about you hosting your open mic coming up here soon. Brother, I, like, congratulations, man. I want to be there every Sunday. I know where I'm going to be at, dude. Yeah, it's, it's going to be crazy. It kind of just uh, fell into my lap. Um yeah, man, like this Sunday, I have Jesus doing a group piece with uh, Emily Dickinson, who's going to be doing a group piece with Kurt Cobain. It's going to be awesome. Moses is going to be doing heroin with Gandhi in the bedroom. Like, it's going to be all kind of midgets and everything's going to be out there. It's going to be gorgeous. Um, uh, but yeah, it's going to be fun. Come out Sunday morning and we're going to have a good time. Um, I just want to create an atmosphere where a poet can be a poet, you know? So here's a poem. It's called For Jane. The dog didn't eat your homework, but the poverty line did. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry that's an honest truth to be trusted in as much as Jesus Christ trusted in God. You went from Thunderbird to Tennyson, back to Thunderbird, from paternity test to paternity test. Spent more time with Yeshua when you should have been 401k hustling, also a man shuffling resumes on careerbuilder.com. Meet God halfway, some would say. I say riding shotgun with the religion sometimes comes with an expensive car note. You pay what you weigh for peace. You prayed it be paved in your everyday passion, Jane. You were born with a pulse full of it. Dropped out of college with a pocket full of cancerous problems. You were buried in heroin. Hard times, heavy heart beating you to hell. You still held up heaven with your massive tears left your neck too weak to walk upright with the thrift store's halo. You you are baked dinner chicken and foil paper for your family. Fabulous 5-4 brunette with brown eyes. Our souls spoke slowly over flu shots on the sixth floor inside a Veterans Affairs Hospital. Miracles are the only meds the Messiah issued us in that moment. And Jane, I'm not sorry for that. Between the both of us, maybe, maybe we could have mustered up enough change to rewire, reset receipts, and return policies for all of the reoccurring nightmares in our brain, Jane, passion, and pain. I was also born with a pulse full of it, post-traumatic stress disorders, and the vibrant guilt. I have a firecracker fist fight for a heart, a sincere fuck you that I can't edit, embedded inside my Marine Corps reason. Whatever forced me into giving up riding shotgun, forced me into forgive me now. It's Nirvana or go nuclear. I am made mostly out of pipe bombs and barrels of gasoline, made mostly out of mushroom clouds and fluent second finger sign languages. We've been paying for life for so long, Jane that we both can't even afford to really die. Miracles are the only meds the Messiah issued us in that moment. And Jane, I'm not sorry for that. Boom. Yo, I love that line, bro. That was awesome, Super yeah, Appreciate you. Uh, so 
And then one more that I need to just, I got to knock out some uh, rough patches in this one more poem, if that's cool with y'all. Can I run one more? Is that good? Yeah, man. Hey, you closing out the night, so. Okay, awesome. Up, awesome, awesome. I'm glad I'm not wearing pants then. I came in comfortable. That's what we're doing. Good, okay. good, good. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, brother. It's called Volcanic Garter Belts. Uh, I'm going to let the poem do whatever it wants to do with me just so I can get a better feel for how it naturally should come off. The volcano had a snooze button vagina monologue that dared me to outlast her boycotted, boycott short curtain calls with the one man standing ovation. Damned if you do. Daredevil if you don't. Hell. She was known to cut off pickup lines doing the rush hour rhetoric as if bothering her guardrails was too much traffic jam for Jameson uh, or top shelf tequila to handle. Hell, she thought heaven was her high price hellfire hip bone, a heavenly hot box office where she scout tickets to her own mile high thigh shows, uh, desert of llama spit and loose fitting lingerie. One hump uh, will leave you raw and unsatisfied. Two humps uh, and you were happy Halfway to an oasis of fake orgasms, and there were more make believe than mirage of maker smart men who actually believed that she was made and put on earth for them volcanic garter belts. No blue blooded Slim Jim could crack the locks on her payroll's chastity belt. Our price lawyers who perpetually filed crotchless briefs could though. Truth is, whenever she took off her Victoria's Secret thongs, two of her time shares were always paid off, but uh, only when the judges whom her rent was running circles around uh, ran their discovery cards dry, any paycheck pelvis patron with proper paperwork would do. The last time you could say she was broke was back when her heart was, back when her heart Hyman was back when her backbone of beautiful was in some revolving nut house when she told me she had publishing credits in the devil's playbook. I should have fucking believed her. Volcanic garter belts. I've never been the type to sip wine and recite communion. I'm more of the in the moment and time again type of forgiveness taker, taking chances, taking uh, shots for every day into God uh, to create earth uh, behind on the rent, risk taker of shots for every day into God to uh, gunsling Adam right out of the garden of good and eating in a brass knuckle baby birth in a bed and breakfast of uh, slow your roll of me. You're bothering my buzz, beautiful. Uh, uh, John the whiskey bread. Randy Bourbon, the bartender, Baptist type of brother, begging second resets of born again breathalyzers to not reward my roadside test with another read of my Miranda Wright's volcanic garter belts. Our type of love was the type of truth that truth was willing to die for. Too much soul for any shot glass or shower curtain to hold. Coconut milk, whiskey glass, ass shooting stars right out of my moonshine orgasms with you. Come with your other conditions that may apply. Side effects might include the swaddle of soup breath of alcoholic sexy, a beautifully backwashed in a birthday suit. Just blow out all the candles and make a pearl tongues. Well placed wish, please. If I'm closing out, then let me freestyle. I have an open mind's open mic on the backside of my brain's insight. Sometimes I find myself walking across a supernova of Anona Lee. Have you ever seen Paul skip, skip rocks to the Dula Duna Muna? Born again, you are a rock star with rhetoric. Tell Diane, I'm still looking for the psych ward and the mental ward. Underneath her hat, have you ever seen uh, the Magus uh, go so hard at the Messiah that the Messiah gives him death like
I don't know what else I can do with you, brother. Do you know what it means to be on an open mind's open mic on a Friday night? It's like getting drunk off the moonshine mixed with the white garden of in God and light. Do you know that sometimes when I blink out in a flash track or freestyle, I always misspell words like, I love myself. I misspell words like, it's going to be a better day tomorrow, Maze. I often misspell words like, damn, these are the last few pills left in this prescription bottle. I often misspell words that spell like, uh, I love you too, Maze. I often misspell words that spell like, uh, God, if you love me, then show me your face. I often misspell words. Words that smell like uh, the scent of fresh cut grass outside the garden of, of good and eating. I often misspell words that spell like maize. You're going to be something one day. I often misspell words that spell like John 316 in the morning. God loved the world so much. He gave us poets some inkwells. He loved the inkwells so much. He gave us poets some quill feathers. From off of Phoenix's tale, God loved the world so much, he gave us an open mind, open mic, on the Friday nights to end the freestyle, just like I misspell, I love myself to life. Don't ever misspell, you love yourself to life. We are amazing people. We can walk on water as long as we believe. Freestyle thing, kind of sort of like that. Like Freestyle, that. what? Yo, you crushed it, brother. Hey, man, Woo! I love you, CP. Fun. I absolutely just love you, brother. That was dope, man. Everyone, give it up for CP. Amazing, amazing. CP. What a way to close out. Right? Yeah. yeah. Good luck trying to sleep after that. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Preach, preach. No fair getting everybody worked up like this. Oh, yeah. Well, well keep that hype rolling for Sunday because he's going to be hosting his open mic. Going, so, yeah. Yes. Keep that um, energy going. I'm so excited you. about about hosting. I think my, hosting twice a month is going to be cool. I hosted like a brick and mortar for about two to three years. I love hosting. I love being like, like when you're a host, you get to see shit on the back end of people who are dying to read, people who want to get bumped up on the list, something that like, yo, my kids are crying. I don't want to miss my turn to read, but I want to let you know what's going on in my life right now so I can go check on it and come back, you know, to do the virtual open mic. Like, there's so much, like, poetic love when poets get together. Yeah. I can't wait to, like, try to maestro this crazy energy that's going to be Sunday. It's going to be fun. Oh, that's a great, great description. Maestro the crazy energy. But CP, you also know that by running things, that is the best way to learn so much so fast. Yeah. Agreed. Yo, I learn so much from y'all every week, man. It's it's just, it's such a pleasure and an honor and a blessing to be able to host this with y'all. Like, I love every last one of y'all. Thank you guys so much. Um, we're going to go ahead and end out the show now. So if y'all want to share love with each other, say goodnight and whatnot. Mama, I love Have you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, everyone. It's wonderful. Bye. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas, mom. Everybody. Love you. Yeah, yeah thank definitely. you for coming thank through. Thomas and Catalyst and Dawes. Thank you very much. We love you all. Wonderful we'll see you next Friday. All right.